Hello, I am Yang Hyo Park. First of all, I feel grateful and honored to present our recent work at Neighbor Labs titled Robot Learning to Paint from Demonstrations in the IRAS 2022 award session. In this presentation, I will briefly overview the core idea and main results of the paper that contribute to making an intelligent robot capable of solving a variety of complex painting tasks in the real world, as you can see on the slide. The key observation we make in this work is that the act of painting in the real physical world can be viewed as a hierarchical decision-making problem. It requires long horizon planning of the brushstrokes, followed by a low-level motor control strategy to realize the planned brushstrokes onto the canvas accurately. A well-trained human painter might put its most attention on how to compose multiple brushstrokes, rather than thinking how to move its hand and arm. Moving its hand and arm to physically control the brush tool seems almost effortless to us. In fact, humans are not actually born with those brushstroke skills. Highly skilled human artists are known to undergo a very long period of training to master their own style of brushstroke skills, as you can see in this video. They practice until they can effortlessly reuse this large repertoire of brushstroke skills for solving whatever artwork they may wish to produce in the future. Keeping this in mind, let's try building a robotic system that can paint just as good as a human painter. The videos on the top shows virtual reinforcement learning agents painting various artworks using a well-defined simulated rendering engine. You can see the agents successfully planning over a long horizon to paint very complex target images in which every stroke actions are exactly rendered onto the virtual canvas with no errors. On the other hand, when you see some of the painting robots performing various artworks in the real world, you can see that there is clearly a huge gap in the quality and complexity of the drawing compared to the ones above. Robotic painting tasks in the real world are often made complicated by the highly complex and stochastic nature of the dynamics that underlie. For example, the physical contact between the painting tool and the canvas, color blendings, and many more. In this paper, we claim that in order to effectively tr transfer the simulated drawing result of the AI agent into the real world, the robot should simply be equipped with an extensive repertoire of robust, dexterous, and reusable brushstroke skills in advance. Our core idea is to learn a parametrized skill of stroke paintings from a large collection of human demonstrations. By pertaining a joint distribution of drawable strokes and required robot actions, one can proceed any offline model-based planning without having to make further online interactions with the real-world environment. To start with, let's see how we collect human demonstrations. We use haptic teleoperation device with bilateral force feedback to collect various stroke drawing demonstrations. We use digital canvas and digital pencil as our painting tool, which highly resembles the complex dynamics of real painting mediums. Human operator was simply asked to draw diverse strokes on the canvas. For every single stroke, the system automatically collects the following pairs of data the rendered stroke images from the digital canvas, joint action commands sent to the robot, additional sensory information coming from the digital pencil. That includes the XY position of the tip, altitude and azimuth of the pencil, and the pressure applied onto the canvas. Here we denote this tuple as internal stroke parameters. We note, however, that this additional sensory information is not always a mandatory requirement as we discussed as a remark in the paper. We collected around 5,000 strokes with varying width, curves, and styles drawn in different parts of the canvas. Using the demonstration, we aim at modeling the joint distribution of robotic joint actions and the image of a stroke drawn on canvas. Although one can directly model the joint distribution of these two, we can further ease the training process when using additional data like internal stroke parameters as an explicit information bottleneck. To be specific, a single generative model is learned to model the distribution of such internal stroke parameters. And two decoder models are trained to decode the parameters each into 
robotic actions, and stroke renderings. We define this latent space that jointly encodes stroke images and robot action comments as robotic painting skill, RPS. We use a flow-based generative model to generate stroke parameters from a random latent variable Z. This network aims to model the distribution of internal stroke parameters in demonstration data set. Note that the use of flow-based generative model allows one to directly estimate the likelihood of generated samples, which can be extremely useful to prevent the use of out-of-distribution samples while drawing. Given the internal stroke parameters, corresponding robotic action command is generated using a conditional VAE model. To train the model, we, mi we minimize the evidence lower bound objective as shown in the equation here. Finally, we train a model that renders the stroke parameters into an image. While conventional CNN architectures can be used, we used recently proposed spatial transformer network to generate even more accurate renderings. To be specific, the network separately renders the shape of the stroke, along with an affine matrix representing the relative position and size respective to the canvas. This allows the network to accurately render the local shapes of the stroke. After learning the RPS space, the problem of robotic painting becomes simple. Rather than planning on the entire drawing in the atomic action space, we can now just plan on the RPS space, where each point represents a single stroke. More concretely, the problem of robotic painting can be formulated as shown in this slide. While the objective being a simple distance between the current canvas and the target image, one can use any model-based planning algorithms since our RPS space allows us to accurately model the canvas dynamics denoted as F. Among various sequential decision-making methods, we used trajectory optimization. We note that any other existing stroke-based rendering algorithms can be a viable option as well. We also note that all the components above, including the objective function and the constraints, are entirely differentiable. Thus, any gradient-based optimization methods can be easily used to stably find a local minimum solution. Finally, we show that limiting the use of strokes with low likelihood dramatically improves the stability of robotic operation. This will be further explained in the following slides. From now on, I will br briefly introduce some notable experiment results in our paper. First, we conducted an ablation study on the size of the demonstration data set we used during training. Size of the demonstration data set actually determines the diversity of diversity of stroke repertoire the robot learned. As expected, rob the robot can paint a better picture with bigger stroke repertoire learned with more demonstrations. Next, we conducted an experiment to verify the effects of likelihood constraint imposed during the high-level planning phase. Since deep generative models can often generate out-of-distribution samples with low likelihood, the preceding decoder models can produce unpredictable robotic actions or inaccurate stroke renderings, as you can see in this figure. Thus, properly constraining the use of such low likelihood strokes, we can efficiently improve the stability of robotic painting. If you're interested in other experimental results, please check out our paper. Before we wrap up, I want to show you the robotic painting results we were able to make using our method. If you want to check out more of our robotic paintings, please check out the Instagram link below. This is the video of a robot named Arbital One being exhibited in Naver headquarters located in South Korea. This will continue until the last week of December this year. Thank you for listening.